Unit 3, Lesson 8. More about constant speed. Number 1. The kangaroo hops 2 kilometers in 3 minutes. At this rate, how long does it take the kangaroo to travel 5 kilometers? I created a table with kilometers on the left and minutes on the right. The kangaroo hops 2 kilometers in 3 minutes. In order to find out how far it goes in 1 kilometer, let's divide the 2 by 2 to make it 1 kilometer. Since we divided the kilometers by 2, let's divide the minutes by 2. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves or 1 and a half or 1.5. So the kangaroo hops 1 kilometer in 1 and a half minutes. Let's multiply the 1 kilometer times 5 to get 5 kilometers since they were wondering how long it took the kangaroo to travel 5 kilometers. Now let's multiply the minutes by 5. 1 and a half minutes times 5 equals 7 and a half minutes. Now we know that it takes the kangaroo 7 and a half minutes to travel 5 kilometers. B. How far does the kangaroo travel in 2 minutes? Again we have kilometers on the left and minutes on the right. So 2 kilometers in 3 minutes. So let's divide the 3 minutes by 3 to get 1 minute and the 2 kilometers by 3 to get 2 thirds kilometers. So we know that after 1 minute the kangaroo travels 2 thirds kilometers. For 2 minutes we would just multiply the 1 times 2 to make 2 minutes and the 2 thirds times 2 gets us 4 thirds kilometers or 1 and 1 third kilometer. So the kangaroo travels 4 thirds kilometers in 2 minutes. Number 2. Mai runs around a 400 meter track at a constant speed of 250 meters per minute. How many minutes does it take Mai to complete 4 laps of the track? Explain or show your reasoning. It's a 400 meter track. So that would be 400 times 4, which is 1,600 meters. I'm going to try to build the meter side of this table up to 1,600. 1 minute times 2 is 2 minutes. 250 meters times 2 is 500. Multiply the 500 times 2 gets me to 1,000. And 2 minutes times 2 gets me to 4 minutes. So I'm getting closer to 1,600 meters. 1,000 meters plus 500 meters gets me to 1,500 meters. I'm short 100 meters. So let's divide the 1,000 meters by 10 to get 100 meters. And 4 minutes divided by 10 gets me to 4 tenths of a minute. So now I have 500 plus 100 is 600 plus 1,000 is 1,600. So we have the 1,600 meters on the left and we have the two minutes that it takes to go 500 meters, the four minutes that it takes to go 1,000 meters, and the four tenths of a minute that it takes to go 100 meters. So if we add all those up, we'll find that it takes six and four tenths of a minute to go 1,600 meters. So it takes my six and four tenths of a minute to go 1,600 meters, or four laps around her 400 meter track. Number 3. At 10 a.m., Han and Tyler both started running towards each other from opposite ends of a 10-mile path along a river. Han runs at a pace of 12 minutes per mile. Tyler runs at a pace of 15 minutes per mile. A. How far does Han run after a half hour and after an hour? On this table, I have minutes on the left and miles on the right. Well, they tell us that Han runs at a pace of 12 minutes for one mile. 12 divided by 2 equals 6, and 6 times 5 gets me to 30 minutes, which is a half an hour. So 1 minute divided by 2 gets me to a half a minute. A half a minute times 5 gets me to 2 and a half minutes. Han can travel 2 and a half miles in a half an hour. On this table, a half hour is represented by 30 minutes. So 30 minutes same as a half hour, Han can go two and a half miles. Now if we multiply that 30 minutes by two, we have 60 minutes, which is equal to an hour. 
So if we multiply two and a half times two, we have five miles. Han can run five miles in 60 minutes or five miles in one hour. And at that same pace, Han runs two and a half miles in 30 minutes or two and a half miles in a half an hour. B. Do Han and Tyler meet on the path within one hour? Explain or show your reasoning. After an hour of running, Han completed five miles towards Tyler, and after an hour of running, Tyler completed four miles running towards Han. That brought them one mile away from one another, because five plus four equals nine, and it was a ten mile trail. So the answer is no, after an hour of running. They would have been one mile away from one another. Number four. Two skateboarders start a race at the same time. Skateboarder A travels at a steady rate of 15 feet per second. Skateboarder B travels at a steady rate of 22 feet per second. After four minutes, how much farther will skateboarder B have traveled? Explain your reasoning. Skateboarder A on the left, skateboarder B on the right. Skateboarder A, 15 feet per second. 1 second times 60 equals 60 seconds or 1 minute. 15 times 60 is 900 feet. Skateboarder B, 1 second times 60 is 60 seconds or 1 minute. 22 times 60 is 1,320 feet. Multiply 60 seconds times 4 and you have 4 minutes because it's really 1 minute times 4. So 1 minute times 4 or 60 seconds times 4 equals 4 minutes. Multiply the other side by 4. 900 times 4 you get 3,600 feet for skateboarder A. Skateboarder B 60 seconds times 4 is 4 minutes. 1,320 times 4 is 5,280. 5,280 minus 3,600 is 1,680 feet. So after four minutes, skateboarder B will be 1,680 feet ahead of skateboarder A. Number five, there are four tablespoons in one fourth cup. There are two cups in one pint. How many tablespoons are there in one pint? If you get stuck, consider drawing a double number line or making a table. I decided to create a table. I put four tablespoons and one fourth cup. One fourth cup times four equals four fourths or one whole cup. So I need to multiply the tablespoons by four. 4 times 4 gets me to 16 tablespoons. So far, 1 cup is 16 tablespoons. 1 cup times 2 gets me to 2 cups, and 16 times 2 gets me to 32 tablespoons. 2 cups also equals 1 pint, so in 1 pint there are 32 tablespoons. Number 6. Two larger cubes are made out of unit cubes. Cube A is 2 by 2 by 2. Cube B is 4 by 4 by 4. The side length of cube B is twice that of cube A. A. Is the surface area of cube B also twice that of cube A? Explain or show your reasoning. Cubes have six sides. Cube A, each side is two units by two units. So to find the area of all six surfaces for cube A, you would have to multiply six times two times two, and that would be 24 units squared. Cube B, each side is four by four, so you'd have to multiply six times four by four, and that would get you 96 units squared. The answer is no because 96 is more than twice that of 24. B. Is the volume of cube B also twice that of cube A? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, the volume of cube A 
is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 units cubed. And the volume for cube B is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64 units cubed. So to answer the question, is the volume of cube B also twice that of cube A? I'd say no. The volume of cube B is 8 times greater than the volume of cube A. 64 units cubed is 8 times greater than 8 units cubed. Congratulations! You have completed Unit 3, Lesson 8. More about constant speed.